everyone here at All for Jesus Church. We are now on our Sunday worship service. Praise the Lord. We encourage you to join us today. And we are a church that believes in Trinity, that our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is one God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's sing our opening song, God is Here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Because we believe that in your presence, Lord God, 
there is fullness of joy. And Lord, we thank thee, Lord God, for this opportunity you have given to all of us, Lord God, with our brothers and sisters joining us right now in Facebook and YouTube. That, Lord, has an opportunity, Lord, for us to listen to your words, Lord God, and, and to listen to your revelation, Lord God. We pray that you will hide my Father under the shadow of your wings, that as he stand here, Lord God, your will be done, Lord. Your will be done in each and every one of us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that as we praise you with our voices, with the songs, with music, with our body, with our hands, lifting your name, Lord. We believe you are pleased. We believe, Lord God, that there will be miracles, Lord, that will happen in each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. We love you with all our hearts, Lord God. Thank you for loving us, caring for us, looking upon us wherever we go, whatever we do, in our plans, in every daily task. Thank you for being with us. And we give you praise, we give you honor, and every church will say, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Psalm 147, verses 7 to 9. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises on the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass grow on the mountains. He gives to the beasts its food, and to the young ravens that cry. Amen. Isn't it good to give thanks to our faithful God? Hallelujah. Let's give him praise. Praise the Lord.
this war. Meko na, my beloved mom, to lead us to our tithes and offering message for today. Amen. Thank you, Minister Melissa. Good morning to all our brothers and sisters in Christ in Facebook, YouTube, around the world. Welcome to All for Jesus Church International. Yes. Amen. Before everything here at All for Jesus Church International, International, we believe that your tithes belongs to your local church. Amen. Let's open our Bible in Malachi 3.10. Bring the whole tithes into the storehouse that there will be a food in my house. Test me in this, say, in, in, this, in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will, not, there will not be room enough to store it. Amen. Let's, uh, inagay na kayo natin dun Another uh, translation in Tagalog, Malakias 3.10 Dahil ninyo ang buong ikapong bahagi sa kamalig o pag mag magkaroon ng pagkain sa ating bahay at sa gayoy, subukan ninyo ako ngayon. Sabi ng Panginoon ng mga hinukbo, tingnan ninyo na hindi ko bubuksan para sa inyo ang mga bintana ng langit at ibubuhos ko sa inyo isang pagpapala na walang sukat na kalalagyan. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, remember, tithing is it for God's benefits. Hindi po benepisyo para sa Panginoon po ito. It doesn't yes. need our money. God yes. doesn't need our money. Hindi yeah. niya kailangan ating pera. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because He owns everything. He, everything He owns. Instead, tithing is a meant for our benefits because sacrificing a portion of our income reminds us to rely in God to meet our needs. Plus, it makes us more aware of the needs of others too. It's not about the money, it's about the heart. Amen. It's about living with the attitude that we've been blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our head. Hallelujah. We bless you. Thank you, Lord God. We love you, we adore you, we exalt your name on high, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence right now. Thank you for your loving us. And we acknowledge, Lord God, apart from you, we can do nothing. Yes. Truly, God, is not by might, nor by power, by my spirit, says the Lord. Lord, thank you for everything, for all the week that you, that you always be with us, Lord God. And right now, we offer unto you, Lord, thanks and offering, Lord God. Bless this, Lord God. Hallelujah. Bless who keep today, Lord God, that you're going to bless them about the next sitting Lord, we give them hundredfold, Lord God, as well as those who can give and give today, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God, that they will bring it and give it to a next Sunday, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, thank you for everything you've done in our life. Thank you for the whole week, for your protection, provision, and guidance, and each one of us, in our families, relatives, and friends. And Lord, we offer to you again next week. That, Lord, we ask for your guidance, protection, and provision, Lord God, in our life, in our families, friends, in our work. And, Lord, we pray to be with us always. Give us the strength that comes from you, Lord. Apart from you, we can do nothing. Lord, we pray that you could give us the wisdom and knowledge that comes from you, Lord Jesus. And guide us, Lord God, to every decision that we make, Lord God. Thank you for everything in your name, Lord God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You are so wonderful, Lord God. Healing us physically, mentally, spiritually, financially in our lives, Lord God. Thank you for everything in your name, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.
James 2, verse 19. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Pastor Isaiah T. Sun Kwan Jr. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Melody Faith, our song leader here in All for Jesus Church. Good morning, everyone. And we welcome you all here in All for Jesus Church International. Thank you for joining us again this morning on our Sunday worship service. Amen. We are also live on Facebook as well as in YouTube. Our Bible lesson for today is entitled Believing and Knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this wonderful day that you have given unto us once more, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given unto us to spread thy holy words to all nations. We thank you, Father, and be with us today, Lord. Anoint each and every one of us, including those who are listening right now, Lord. And bless each and every one of us. We thank you, Father, and be with us today, Lord, as we declare your, the victory that you have given unto us. Cover us with your most precious blood. And protect us, Lord, under the shadow of your wings. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Like I said, brothers and sisters, our lesson for today is about believing and knowing Jesus Christ. What is the difference between believing and knowing Jesus Christ? We should recognize that there are enormous differences between knowing Jesus and believing in Jesus. Amen? Many people say they believe in Jesus, that he is the author and perfecter of our faith. Some people say that they know Jesus, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. First and foremost, before we begin with our Bible lesson, let us examine and evaluate the meaning of knowing and believing. Knowing and believing are different words amen, that most of the time used in religious teaching across the world. Knowing means that you possess knowledge and familiarity. On the other hand, believing means that you have accepted something to be true and correct or you are confident and have trust in something for example you believe that you are beautiful but people know you are not <laughs> there has to be a clarification and explanation between what you believe and what you know when you say you believe you specify and indicated that you don't know about the thing because in your personal experience it has not yet occurred man <laughs> for example you believe that you will get to heaven if you don't smoke or drink alcoholic drinks or you believe that if you are honest with your husband or your wife you are being loyal to your relationship. Belief are based on your words or a particular train of your thought. You apply and implement this belief in your life because they are appealing. In other words, they are inviting and tempting. As a result, you feel and begin to believe that they are true. However, do you have any assurance that what you just believe in is true? You will never come back from heaven and say that you went there because you didn't smoke or drink. There are so many religious teachers and pastors who want you to believe and follow them blindly without letting you know whether their teachings are truth or not. No. You should never simply believe 
and accept their words. Amen? Yeah. You should check out more deeper into the meaning and know what they are speaking. Amen? An element or amount of doubt should be put in between believing and knowing. But doubt with discernment and intelligence. Even if you know the useful information, it should be tested so that it turns into knowledge and then transform and convert it into a belief. Amen. If you are a believer, then you are easily fooled. In other words, madani kang maloko o madani kang mautok because the reason is you can easily fall into a trap of many scams. Here are here are the three simple and basic difference between believing and knowing. Number one, believing means that you have chosen the truth, but knowing means that you are certain and sure about that truth. Believing always leaves room for doubt, but knowing leads to confidence. Believing is blind trust, amen? While knowing is trusting with awareness. As humans, you will feel comforted in knowing things. If you know, then you are certain. Okay. Yes. Sometime a few years back, I learned about Jesus Christ. Before that moment, I knew about Him. I knew He was born in a manger which I don't know the reason why. The next thing I knew, <laughs> he was killed, and they put him on the cross, which in turn, I don't have any idea why he was killed. In short, I knew about him, but I did not know him. Man, I had a religion, but I did not have a relationship with God. Yeah. But God's grace alone, the Holy Spirit, Use the Bible to open my eyes to the fact that the knowledge without relationship does not save. Amen? That was a bad news. But there was a good news too. A sinner like me could indeed have a relationship with God through personal faith in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? who died in my place and rose from the dead. A good news that I could have a relationship with the living God was very different than, our, than religion without relationship. Religion is never ending quest for eternal life, which yes. deep down everyone wants. Man. Everyone wants to live forever. And most people would think they will. Most people believe they will eventually get to heaven. Even those who believe in a fictional and imaginary place called purgatory, which they <laughs> believe they will eventually leave that place and receive eternal life. But eternal life uh -oh. is not about heaven. Yeah. Possessing and having eternal life is not primarily about going to heaven when we die. Yeah. It is about having a relationship with God Amen. that begins Amen. here in this life Amen. and Amen. continues for all eternity. This is what Jesus said in John 17 verse 3. I want you to open your Bibles, brothers and sisters, in John 17 verse 3. I'm reading in NIV. Now, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Here, how did Jesus define eternal life? He defined, he defined it as a relationship. As he prayed to the Father, he said, This is eternal life, that they know you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. John 17 verse 3. If eternal life is knowing God, then we must believe. 
There is a way to have a relationship with Him. The Bible states the only way to eternal life is through a relationship with God. And that relationship comes through the one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. It is this living relationship that the Apostle Paul has in mind when he writes in Philippians 3 verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. What does the Apostle Paul mean by to know him? The word know means to know personally by experience. Man. The word indicates personal relationship. To have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ requires both a one-time experience. That is when the relationship begins and an ongoing experience. Therefore, the relationship never stops growing. Man. To know Jesus Christ means to meet Him in the experience of conversion. Being transferred from darkness to light. Yes. Conversion Amen. is a one-time event. However, it is also the beginning of something completely new. Man. It begins a relationship which never ends. To know Jesus Christ means to walk with Him in the experience of a growing relationship. Being transformed from self, S-E-L-F, into his image. Apostle Paul wanted to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Apostle Paul grew in his relationship with Christ by setting his mind on the risen life and walking in its power. Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4. What does it what does it mean to know Christ and the power of his resurrection? To start with, reflect on just two essential requirements. Number one, to know Christ and the power of his resurrection means to pursue holiness. <laughs> Romans 6 verses 1 to 4. The New Testament repeatedly calls us to live in the power of the risen life, to put off and the old self and put on the new. Why? Because the resurrection of Christ secured and guarded for us the power to say no to sin and yes to righteousness. To know Christ and the power of resurrection means to live in the light and walk away from the darkness. Romans 13 verses 12 to 14. Believers have been transferred out of darkness into the light. Out of dominion of Satan. Man, into the kingdom of God. Colossians 1 verses 11 to 14. Clearly to know Jesus Christ in relationship. Means to cooperate in the ongoing process of being transformed into his image. But how does that happen? Practically speaking, it is impossible to be growing in your relationship with God without maintaining regular communication with him. Amen. How do we communicate with the, with the Lord so that we grow in our relationship with him? There are four primary ways and methods Number one is prayer. Amen. Amen. When you pray to God, you are talking to God. Amen. Amen. He's reading Amen. the Bible. Number two is reading the Bible. Amen. When you read the Bible, God is talking to you. Amen. Amen. Number three, fellowship in the church. Yes. We encourage the growth of each other's relationship with Christ. Yes. Number four, witnessing and telling others about Christ. Christ. Amen. Who we have relation with, we have relationship with. The gospel is the written words of the recent word. Man. Yes. It is impossible to have a vibrant and dynamic relationship with Christ without 
is spending time in His Word. Di ba? Prayer is our speaking to God in worship, praise, and submitting our needs. Fellowship in the church is our growth in Christ like love. Without being part of local community of believers, a professing and asserting Christian becomes increasingly proud and self-reliant. Witnessing is telling others what Christ has done in our lives. It is giving verbal testimony of His saving grace, which they receive through faith in the risen Savior. All four of these need to be active for our relationship with Christ to grow. This describes the life of faith. To know Jesus Christ also means to come to Him by faith as a sinner who desperately needs Him. To know Jesus Christ also means to walk Him by faith. To walk to Him by faith. There is a common denominator between knowing and believing in Jesus Christ. In James, 2, chap in James chapter 2 verse 19, as our princess melody read, You believe that there is one God. Good! Even the demons believe that. And shudder. <laughs> there is not one demon who, do not who does not know that Jesus is the Christ. Yes. The son of the living God. There is not one demon who does not know that God is the creator of, of this world. Yes. There is not one demon who does not know that Jesus will come again to judge the world. Amen. Satan and his demons know who Jesus is. They know better than many people do. Yes. Knowing Jesus <laughs> cannot save. Yes. It is in receiving and yes. believing in Jesus Amen. as Lord and Savior that saves. Amen. So then, what is the difference between knowing and believing? In modern day English, belief has a different meaning than what it did to the Jews during the days of Jesus on this earth. One could not believe something without acting and living out that belief. In one's action did not demonstrate that belief. It was the same as unbelief. Amen? If you believe it, you leave it. Satan and his demons know who Jesus is. But Satan and his demons would never put their trust and reliance on Jesus. That's the difference between knowing and believing. In fact, we are at least still grateful that God does not expect us to be perfect in our obedience and reliance. Though we are not perfect in obedience and reliance to Jesus, we are nevertheless called to obey and trust. Believing in Jesus is a central and critical doctrine of the Bible, crucial and vital to our relationship with Him and all the spiritual blessings that He provides. Believing is the most relevant and exciting part of knowing Jesus. He, uh, Jesus said, who he believes in me, in John 6, 47, John 6, verse 47, Jesus said, who, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Yes. John 3, verse 16, Thank letter B, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. everlasting life. Amen. Very specifically, yes, when we read in the Bible about believing, and when we sing about believing, is it only talking about a heartfelt and mental approval to the truthfulness of who Jesus truly is and what he did for us on the cross or is it something else? Believing and not obeying is totally different. Yes. <laughs> they are not the same. the same. There are many people in the Bible today and today who believe but do not obey. That statement is true. But yes. we are talking about those 
who truly and sufficiently believe as God uses that word. The scripture usually uses the words believe and obey, mutually and jointly emphasizing God's view of faith as an obedient faith. Amen. Highlight, brothers and sisters, John chapter 6, verse 36 in your Bibles. He said, who he believes in the Son has eternal life. Yes. But he who does not obey the Son will not see life. Amen. Yes. But the wrath of God abides in him. Yes. Look carefully, brothers and sisters. The word eternal life is for one who believes, but not for one who does not obey. Amen. Millions of people declare and proclaim a belief in Jesus Christ. But the question is, is their belief consistent and persistent with the biblical description of believing in Jesus? Or, on the other hand, you do, you, do you think faith in Jesus Christ is a meaningless and sentimental false comfort? Jesus of Nazareth blasted this warning to those who did not believe. In John 8, verses 23 to 24, I'm reading in NIV. He said, You are from below. I am from above. You are from this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. You will indeed die in your sins. Surely, the question of faith in Jesus Christ is no light and easy matter, amen, reserved for only the religiously sentimentals. Ignorance can cost you your eternal life, amen. Yes. As you will see, belief in the Lord Jesus Christ means believing and trusting Him and doing what He says. Yes. In short, obey His commands or be a doer of his words. Amen. Amen. Faith in Jesus Christ means believing that he is God and divine. The same type of being as the Father, the willingly submissive to the Father's authority. Faith in Jesus Christ means believing that he existed eternally with the Father, without beginning or end. Many Christians are discouraged because well, they know with their heads that God loves them, but they don't believe it. They doubt it personally. On the other hand, there are many who believe they are Christians and do not doubt it, but they don't know Jesus, amen, and they don't know His love for them personally. There are those who rely and depend too much on on the no side of the knowing and believing statement. For the word no, it does not mean just to know information, but to know by experience. In other words, to know by personal account. Therefore, there are those who rely and depend too much on the knowing side and seeking and pursuing every spiritual experience they can find. Many of them are led astray because of it. <laughs> then, there are those who rely and depend on the believing side and become to be more formal and less intense or less captivated. They believe Christianity is more intellectual than put into practical use. All Christians both know and believe the love of God for them personally. But it is our responsibility to be balanced in both. The healthy and balanced Christian is one who both knows and believes and pursues both heartily. Amen. When reading the scriptures, we must avoid reading things into them that are not there. Amen. We must also exercise caution and awareness to avoid danger or mistakes trying to read between the lines as if there is always a hidden meaning. In our lesson today, 
indicates that sin is not believing. Knowing is believing. Salvation is first observed, then believe, amen? Yes. To be saved is to have experienced an encounter with God, yes. followed yes. by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Yes. There are many other times in the Christian life where you have to believe without knowing. We don't know, we do know in whom we have believed, and we are convinced to know Him to be nothing but good to us, even though the valley of the shadow of death, and He has never done us evil. When He has taken loved ones from us, we can proclaim it is good. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 1 verse 21. We don't always know what God is up to, but yes. we know in whom we have believed. Amen. But His love for us works in all storms to our benefit. And that's all we need to know. Amen. To Amen. God be the glory. Father in heaven, we thank you for your, for your wonderful nations today, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Yes. We thank you for your anointing, Lord. Amen. We thank you and be with us again next week, Lord, yes, as Lord. we declare your holy words. Amen. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, asking everyone to to follow this prayer. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you want to renew your relationship with our Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, I am coming before your throne, and I'm acknowledging that I am a sinner. I pray, Lord Jesus, to forgive me for all my sins and cleanse me by your most and precious blood. I believe in you, Lord Jesus, that you are the only begotten Son of our Heavenly Father to die on the cross on, and on the third day rose again from the dead and now sitting at the right throne of God. Thank you, Jesus, for I know that this day is the day that you have given to me and I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior, reign in my heart, reign in my life. I want you, Lord Jesus, to be the one who, who is the commander of my life. And help me, Holy Spirit, to do the will of God and walk according to His ways. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for today, for the eternal life you have given to me, for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm encouraging you, brothers and sisters, if you follow that prayer, to find a local church where you can grow in your uh, walk with the Lord. Amen. With our brothers and sisters as well. And I'm just going to give a quick prayer for those people who are sick. Heavenly Father, we entrust you, Lord God, our brothers and sisters, Lord God, who are sick, who are physically sick right now. We pray for them that you will heal them, Lord Jesus, and that you will touch them every part of their body, Lord God. Amen. Truly, Lord Jesus, that you are our Jehovah Rapha, our, our great physician, and that we believe, Lord God, that you will give the, you will restore the strength of our brothers and sisters, Lord God, and that you will give them, Lord God, the wisdom on how to handle, Lord Jesus, their current situation, Lord God. And bless them, Lord God, whatever their needs, Lord God, uh, for their medicine or for, for them to see a doctor, Lord God, provided, Lord God. We also pray for Pastor Edward, who is uh, in the hospital, Lord God. We pray for him, Lord Jesus. We believe that you are God who is in control. Heal his, uh, heal his body in Jesus' name. Lord God, whatever his aches, whatever his needs, his family's needs, Lord God, supply it, Lord God. He is your child, and you called him, Lord God, to lead your flock, Lord God. And we pray that you will give him a long and satisfying life with his family, and that you will continue to use him for your glory, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for the miracles you have done in his life. 
in his body, that you have restored him in Jesus' name. We give you praise, we give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. May I call now the praise and worship team? Hallelujah. Let's sing our victory song, What a Mighty God We Serve. Amen. He is Almighty One. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes.